All right. Uh, I think this is... Yeah, it looks like it's live. I'm also trying to do this with uh, ultra-low latency, so we'll see how this goes. A um, couple things uh, from last time. I wanted to let you guys know um, I have not been able to get YouTube to up my uh, uh, API quota, so we'll see how long StreamBuddy lasts, but for right now, uh, it should sort of work. So if you guys are like booming and moving in chat, it should work at this point. Um, fingers crossed that this does actually like continue here. Um, and uh, everything else about StreamBuddy, because I'm really trying to follow the rules with regards to um, like what it would take to actually stream uh, and have like the nice background music. But yeah, booms and moves and all of that should work. Uh, one of the other nice things is today, it's not going to be that long, and we're going to have enough time to um, to hopefully just dive in. And it's only, like, I have a hard stop in three hours, so I can't go any more past three hours. Um, and, yes, boom and move should absolutely work at this point. I, I think I just saw one go off. Um, anyway, uh, so a little while ago, there was this uh, color uh, e-paper... Uh, display by WaveShare, and, and hopefully my mom won't see this stream or anything about it until until her birthday, which is coming up later this month. Um, but there's a full seven color e-paper or e-ink display thing from WaveShare, and I saw it and I just immediately bought it. And right afterwards, uh, it went <laughs> right into back order. Um, but this thing looks really neat. I'm really hoping to fire it up. I saw a post on Twitter, which I don't have right now, of somebody else who's gotten this thing fired up. So I'm going to go see how this rolls, and we will go from there. Um, so the idea is that I'm actually going to be using... Um, uh, ooh, actually, let's go make another scene real quick here. Um, uh, and we're going to just say... Uh, uh, this button, and then this button, and then this button. Okay, cool. So what I have here is I have the uh, the board. Uh, my friend actually draw drew the uh, some of the designs on. So I'm starting to really fancy this whole making the electronics look good. But if you look at this board, what it's got on it is it's got a micro SD card, and it's got USB right there. And it's got a tiny little STM32F042 um, on it, right in the middle. And these boards are, well, hopefully what I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to be taking it and I'm going to be putting a bunch of pictures on an SD card. And those pictures should display on this paper display. But the, 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 the funny thing here, the trick, is that I'm going to draw a picture and I'm going to to change that picture every night at midnight. So my mom, when she gets it, it'll be a picture of her old cat. Um, and then the next day it'll be a picture of my brother or something like that. And she'll, she'll wonder, wait a minute, I thought he gave me a picture of the cat. And then it's a different picture. And I wanna see how long it takes her before she either thinks she's going crazy or she catches on to the fact that this picture frame changes every day. Um, so we'll go for that. And no, this processor does not have an RTC. I have another board I'm toying with that, that does, um, that does have an RTC, an AT Mega 328P. Um, but, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm probably not going to use that just because, well, I'm certainly not going to develop on it. So I might switch to it at some point. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see. Um, also, I was just wondering, is the, um, is the volume for the sound in chat, is that all good? Um, the, the background audio and stuff like that. Uh, also, uh, I'm actually going to be using the stm 32 f 042fun folder. Um, and this, this stm 32 f 042fun thing uh, is, is basically my little, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's like... A, I'm still trying to get some of my windows in order here. Um, it's it's my experiments with an STM32F042. Um, and uh, I'll actually just pull it up right here. Uh, GitHub, CNLore, STM32F042, fun. It's underscore fun, right? I think it's underscore fun, yeah. 
Um, and so I've started putting more and more of my little bits here, but it's a really, really basic environment. Um, I use it in TensorGrow Lamp, so I can just say like make, and it reflashes and, and, and runs on the remote device, and I can do things like printf and stuff like that. So that's how I know that this device is working right now. Um, so I'm gonna go to get uh, STM32F 042 fun. Um, let's make uh, make your um, e paper uh, present. Uh, and in here, I'm going to copy the contents of um, uh, let's do STM32F 042 cx blah 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 firmware star dot uh, and that should copy the contents over so I should be able to make and it looks like it flashed um, actually I really can't remember correctly I think it even enumerates as a USB device let's see here uh, may not actually I need to copy that functionality over yeah it looks like we'll have to copy that functionality over um, uh, Let's see. Oh, that's a really good idea. I might do a reaction video, but it won't be a reaction video. It would be like a phone call when she calls me up the next day. I'll have to figure out how to record things on my phone, um, and uh, and in 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 like get her reaction. And I'll I'll post that if it actually works out. Like if I can record it and everything, and she's okay with it. Um. So the first things that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to I guess. Uh, first, I want to make sure that I can bring this thing up with USB. So I don't have that right now. Um, uh, LTR, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to use this device. Uh, we're not going to use, uh, let's see, what else is there? It uses I squared C, but I don't think these things use I squared C. Uh, no, they're SPI. So let's remove static. Squared C dot H C. Um, we're not going to be using WS2812, so RM WS2812 dot C dot H. We're not going to use any touch sensing, um, so touch dot C, touch dot H. And we aren't left with that much. Um, I think I might want to leave the ADC just in case you want to do it. Um, uh, wait, what's happening? Ooh, okay, so I can switch off of ultra low latency. Let me go do that. Um, so stream settings, uh-oh. Hmm, I don't have any means to reduce that. Uh, if you guys are still having trouble with the stream, please let me know and I can try to adjust it a little bit later. Um, anyway. Um, so I'm going to change the make file right now. And so these, this way of developing is like the way that I'm most comfortable with. It's really easy to just kind of go throw a bunch of stuff together and have it work. Um, and, and more than that, it, it, it produces executables which are really tiny. So you don't have to worry about having these big chips or you can throw in a lot more functionality without sort of any extra uh, worrying about stuff and like space constraints and time constraints. Um, when you start fast and you start designing your thing in such a way that it will be fast, it's just you run in. I find that you run into less issues like that. So, no touch. We do want the ADC. We're probably not going to use it. We're not going to use the WS2812s. We do want to initialize USB. Um, we're not going to trigger the the DMA. We're not going to use that. We're not going to use the touch counts. Um, oh, one of the things I wanted to do, uh, just jump from to 360 though. By and large is here. <laughs> um, ah, okay. So one of the other things is my dad has unwittingly walked his way into this and I, I may or may not, um, be doing this, uh, be adding this to the gift. But uh, my dad bought me this right here, which is a, um, a WWV receiver module. Um, and what that would be would be something that would let me receive the time on the 60 kilohertz carrier. 
so I can know what time it is. Now, realistically, I'm expecting the clock, which I put a crystal on this board. So this is normally a crystalless part, but it, it, I have the crystal there just in case it is, it is something useful. Um, I see that you guys are really having trouble with the stream. I'm going to reduce the bitrate a little bit and restart it real quick, and we'll see if that, uh, if that makes it work any better. Um... So I have to stop and start. Okay, let's see, did that keep it going? Hitched, okay, looks like we're going again. Test, test, let's see if that, uh, that updated. Stop popping the error now. So does that mean uh, it, it's working for you? I hope it is, I really hope it is working. Um, Okay, well let's just assume it's better. I, I did reduce my bandwidth usage. Um, I sometimes worry about the quality. Um, oh, also, let me actually put the playlist on shuffle since I have a lot of new music now that's stream safe. <sighs> anyway, moving on. Um, so I'm going to have to rip out a bunch of the features here. Um, Let's see here. Uh, I'm just gonna send some random things out. Uh, zero equals zero to AA. Maybe CC one, two. Okay, so one of the other things I think would be fun is if when you pl plug this into a PC, the USB enumerates it as a USB hub, um, not a USB hub, as a, uh, a, a mass storage device. So it should be really easy to drag and drop photos uh, onto this thing from my host PC. I think that that might bring it to something where it, it actually kind of is convenient long term. Um, like for other people to actually use this as a dev board uh, with these uh, e-paper displays. I don't know that people are going to want it, but I'm going to just try for it. Um, so let's get this uh, party started. Um, I'm not going to enable that pin, but what I am going to want to do is I am going to want to... Um, I have a little LED on this board hooked up to boot zero, so we'll see. That's PB8. So port B8. 1, 8. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, turn it on and make sure we can at least blink a little bit. Um, make sure we got something here. Um, one, eight. And so that LED should be right there. Um, let's see if you guys can see it. Uh, make. Ooh. Let's also fix our, uh, our compile errors while we're at this. Something's wrong. Hmm. Oh, it's already running. Herp derp. J tag failure. Oh, it got hosed because I was running two copies at once. Hello, everybody who's just coming in right now. Uh, JTAG failure, that's really concerning. What the heck? Oh, okay, I think it worked. And the little light is not on, so... Hmm... Hmm. Hmm. Why is this not working? Uh, one eight, one eight, in out out. GPIO on. Uh, let's try GPIO off. Maybe. Maybe I have the the polarity in backwards. 
Oh, that's interesting. It's like flashing really briefly. Hmm. Let's see here. Why would that light flash and then turn off? Um, let's delete some of this code and make sure there's not something stupid hiding in here. Um, also, let's throw on the debug flags. Oh, well, they're already on, so we should actually be getting, like, text printing and junk. I'm a little bit concerned, too, because, hmm, something is wrong here. Let's see, it is possible that this board could be a little screwed up. I had trouble with it earlier. Okay, so now it's waking up, printing some stuff, and then stopping. Okay, so GPIO on. Let's see if this works. Ah, good. Now our light is on. So something about this board is just screwed up, so we're not going to worry about that. We have a functional board. That's all that really matters. Um, so uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll recap uh, briefly. Um, so the idea is I'm going to make a gift for my mom in which it is this e-paper display that'll show like a picture of her old cat and then at midnight every night it'll change pictures and uh, what my goal is is just to see how long it'll take before she either thinks she's crazy or goes and calls me and is like Charles what is up with your demon picture. Um, the thing that really got me was some of these pictures from this e-ink display are just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to totally be playing around with that and seeing like how good I can make them look. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. So uh, we have that. We have GPIO that can turn on this light and turn it back off. Um, let's see here. Let's look for some specifications about this thing. Um, and then we're gonna try to connect something up to it. So I, I have uh, kind of in mind what these pins could be. Um, and I have a Sele with me actually. So we could just start by plugging them into some free pins and seeing what happens. So let's see here, what is unallocated? Looks like all of port B is free except for like port B8 and port B0. So we should probably be using that. Um, so I'm going to connect in uh, the ground here. Uh, and I'm going to start plugging these pins in. So PB, PB1, PB2, PB3. Can you guys see this clearly? I, I can't really. Oh, my fingers aren't too much in the way for you guys to see what's going on. Four, five. Okay, um, and let's see, what is the... Uh, it is DN clock CSDC reset and busy. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it means we need two more wires. So one and two. This will be B1 through B7. That doesn't add up. B Whoa, it's missing B2 because that's not on this processor. Um, the uh, the e-paper display is 5.5 or 5.6 inches. Um, the one streaming the board, if possible, put up a little bit higher. Um, no, I really don't have any means to put that up any higher. Um, I see why you would want that though. So maybe if I rotate this. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Oh, anyway, 
Um, let's see here. On this paper, e-paper display, we're going to need to look up some stuff. Uh, so it says 3.3 slash 5 volts. What does that mean? Does that mean it wants 3.3 or does it want 5 or does it really not matter? Um, so it looks like it's recommending 3.3 volts. Okay, we can do that. Because over on this side, I've got a 3.3, although let's connect the ground first because this we're doing this all hot so I'm gonna plug that into ground this into 3.3 volts and then let's just go down the list so it would be the purple pin it would be busy so we're gonna do that with uh, PB1 and then reset is white That'll be PB2. And then green will be DC, which will be PB3. And then orange will be PB4. Or 5, 5, because it's all offset by 1 now. And then yellow. And then blue. kind of see that on there. Okay. Um, now let's see here. Uh, so I have those in order. I'm going to make a new file here. Um, I'm going to call it ePaper. Uh, or actually we should probably call it by a part number so this will be is there even a part number associated with this or is it just a thing it's got a skew model no I think this is just a thing okay uh, uh, e paper color uh, dot h found if def e, e paper color h find e paper color h and if um, e paper module from wave share it's this one um, how to find and we're going to go define what pins everything is at. Um, let's see here. Let's do that based off of this thing right here. And so we did it in that order. So busy. Uh, wave share busy is uh, we're going to make this IOB number one. So that would be one one, pound defined WVS um, RST. For reset, we'll just do the whole word. And, uh, WVS. Next one is DC. And that is, uh, oh wait, uh, that'd be 314. Yes. Next one is clock, and that will be 0x15, pound defined, WVS. Next one is 
Din. Uh, that doesn't add up. What did I miss? I missed something. Um. Hmm. Busy. One, two, three, four, five, six. What am I missing? Busy reset DC clock. Busy reset DC. Oh, CS. <laughs> Sorry about that. CS. DN. 0x17161514131. Okay. Um, so these are going to be our pins. Uh, void setup e paper display. Um, okay, we're going to write that function. Uh, e paper color dot c uh, pound include e paper color dot h. We're going to go write this function shortly. Uh, so the idea is we're going to make sure that all of these things are in like up down mode, except for uh, uh, busy. We want to be able to monitor busy. Um, uh, so pound include systems dot h. Uh, and so systems.h is a thing that I wrote in here, or system, oh shoot, what do I even call it now? It's not that one. No, that's, that's a different thing. Where is my thing? I wrote one. I swear, I know I wrote something. Oh, here it is, systems. Ha ha ha, it's right here. Um, and so this just has a bunch of neat little utility functions. Um, for uh, for making like I/O work on the uh, STM32 F042, so we're going to go configure the I/O and with these parameters. So we're going to go down this list. Um, so I'm going to go. Um, uh, actually, you know what? I just realized something. I did not post uh, this to my Discord. Let me go do that right now. Uh, BTW making an e-ink display thing. Sorry about that, guys. Going live for about 2.5 hours. Okay, forgot about that. Let's go back to work. Um, so, now we have those things, and we're going to go paste that into here, and we're going to go configure some I.O. on this part. Um, and so I'm going to say configure GPIO, and we'll start with the first one. It's busy, and what we care about here is that we want it to be uh, in out flag in because we want to see when the display is busy. And then the next one is going to be in out, um, and it's going to be uh, mm, we would want it to be output and for reset. We probably want to leave the display in reset by default, so we're going to have to see how to do that. Uh, let's see here. External reset, low for reset, so we're going to want to keep that thing low by default. Default off. Configure GPIO. Uh, let's fix that. Typo. Uh, DC. Um, so what is DC? Uh, uh, it doesn't really matter, so we'll just do in, out, out, configure, GPIO, WBS, CS, uh, and we're going to make this uh, in, out, out, and we're going to make it so it defaults to on, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't actually reset. Um, uh, Whew, let's see here. So what's next? So we're going to have the CS, we're going to have the clock next. Um, I don't think that that really matters which way it is default right now. And we're going to have DIN, which it doesn't really matter which way we have default right now. So I think we're going to start with those being uh, um, off. Um, and then, um, yeah. Yeah, and also I guess I probably don't want to print out all that junk, so uh, let's just, at least in here, send text setting up e-ink display, and down here uh, we're going to say it was done. Um,
Uh, the idea is that I'm going to downscale and do all of the processing beforehand, and I'm only going to load on the card what I need. But right now, I've never used this e-ink display yet, so I don't know what it actually needs. Um, uh, on, uh, also, let me switch my view here to all... Wait. I can't. It just has live chat. Live chat. Okay. I think that'll do me. Um, okay. And so I guess just to start, um, I think I would want to uh, delay US 10,000. So let's like wait 10 milliseconds. And then there's like a systems command for turning a GPIO on. So we're going to say GPIO on. Um, and we're going to use WVS reset. So we'll be taking it out of reset. Um, okay, uh, let's say make and see what explodes. Um, hmm. Oh, I never actually called setup. Let me go do that. Um, turn on blinky light. Set up e-paper display. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, you know what? We have to add this to the make file. So we're going to add to the make file another thing. Uh, this is how easy editing make files is, people. Um, it'll be e-paper color dot c. Done. Okay, make. Boom! Running. Okay, setting up. Oh, you know what? I should have changed the, the second message. Done setting up display. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do in order to test this is we're going to run the Sele software um, as much as I, you know what, I just realized I don't want my password to be this. Okay. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to capture uh, all of the, the pins that I care about. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're only going to actually capture it a lot slower. So we're going to be down around here. Um, we're not even going to go very fast to begin with. Um, so let's say go. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to restart this, reflash it, boom, done, and it's set up. And then I can stop the capture. It's kind of already going to stop on its own. And as expected, what we actually see is we see the things wake up and set up. And then right here, how long is that? That's not the right length of time. That's not the right length of time at all. Um, but the idea is that after it does the initial setup, we should see the reset line uh, going in a different direction. So, hmm, hmm, let's do a few things first. So let's first, uh, I guess, add uh, add some labels. So I guess the, the first one is, uh, let's make sure these are actually wired the same. So purple, busy, okay, yeah, so this is going straight down. Um, busy, reset, DC, CS, CLK, In. Okay, and so the reset line is starting low and then going high. Oh, this is the busy line. Okay, that's fair. Um, and yeah, this looks like this is this is a while, but let's see. What does that work out to? 89 milliseconds? Something's weird there. Um, tell you what, I'm going to do a really quick clock pulse on the chip select line, and we're going to find out 
um, what the heck is actually going on with the chipset select, chipset, chip select line. So we're gonna go turn it off, wait 10 milliseconds and turn it back on. It's entirely possible, oopsies. Oh, what the heck is going on with my paper here? Uh, uh, what is going on? It deleted my work. Busy. Reset. DC. CS. Lock. Again. Okay. And now we should be able to restart it. Also, I feel like, uh, well, no, I really shouldn't put the music on unless I'm not going to talk for a little while. Um, okay, let's see what actually happened in all of this. So we have this chip select line right here going low for how long? It is going low for uh, 88 milliseconds. What is going on? Uh, let's see what happens if we reduce the time. Something might be wrong with delay microseconds. Uh, are you guys still having trouble with this? I, I will definitely not be doing uh, ultra low latency in the future, but it is unfortunately too late for me to change that. Um, anyway, okay. Uh, Try this again. And this is about 8.9. So okay, so something's just wrong with my delay microseconds function. What is wrong with that function? Does it not know the H clock frequency? So right now my chip thinks it's operating at 48 megahertz. Hmm. You know what? I wonder this chip might not know what the HS the external it might be using the external oscillator and it might not know what frequency it's supposed to run at. Um, let's at least spend a moment and check that out just in case. I think it just doesn't know. this puppy. Okay, so it's still booted. Oh. Now let's see if this is CS is low for roughly I have no idea. It's even wronger now. I can try taking the stream offline briefly and then seeing if I can swap to low latency. I'll do that right now. No, sorry, it won't let me do it. Once I've selected it to be uh, ultra low latency stream, it will not let me change. Sorry, guys. Um, I'll, I'll remember that for the future, though.
So I don't know why the timing is all wrong. I will worry about that in the future. That's definitely going to go on my to-do list, though. Um, so to do why is HSE timing so bad? Question mark. Uh, let's just not worry about that for right now. We'll just keep on uh, rolling here. Um, okay, so what's the next thing we got to do? We can go twiddle these bits. We can go like do whatever we want to do. Now, let's see how we actually transfer data. So it looks like the way this is defined is four bits. And it encodes three bits worth of, of colors in those four bits. Wow, typo. Um, yeah, it looks like it's it's four bits of data in three bits. So uh, that or three bits of data in four bits. Uh, so, people on the stream, uh, if you are having trouble, please tell me right now. If it's enough people, I am willing to terminate the broadcast and like actually try to get it restarted. Um, okay. Uh, sorry for the rest of YouTube here. Let's. This is. Yeah. Okay, got it. I'm going to just end the stream and we're going to restart.